not go to close, finding a solution to bubbles and holes, utilizing traditional techniques, mending all clothes equally, despite the commercial value, reusing and repurposing found materials, versatile embroidery. So I started by drawing some circles all over the hoodie. Now I am drawing the lines I want. The circle is going to just have some simple stripe pattern. So I'm using my ruler to line everything up and draw some straight lines. This is a simple one to start out with. And then I'll show you some more complicated sashiko patterns. By the way, I'm using a chocolate by Clover. It is a Japanese company, but you can buy this in the United States and the UK online, I believe. Um, it's just a chalk rolly pen thing, and it's for making these kind of temporary lines. It should wash out, but some fabrics like to keep it, so be careful. I've never had that happen to me, so I've been kind of lucky, but it's always good to test it out on your chosen material first. I don't want to hate from Sashiko Purist. I know I'm not perfectly stitching by any means, but I don't have time for that. I don't really care that much. It looks cool to me. So this is how I do it. You can do it perfectly if you want. That's what the ruler is for. If you are watching closely, you'll see like I'm doing here, I'm checking the tension as I go along, especially because this is a stretchy garment. It's quite hard to get the tension right. I'm not using an embroidery hoop for that reason. If this was just a straight woven fabric, I would, but I found that with jersey, the hoop doesn't really help, in my opinion. It just makes it look stretched out. So I'm just being as careful as possible as I go along, knowing that there might be some little kind of bumps here and there, but that's fine. Ironing it will hopefully improve that a little bit. I've got mega wrist pain after this. If anyone has any advice about that, I would really appreciate it. Let me know in the comments. Alright, so this is the simple pattern done. Next, I'm going to do some drawings to show you some more complex patterns. First, I'm going to draw some lines in black, and then with a red marker, I'll show you the actual stitching marks. If you wanted to copy both lines onto your fabric, of course you can do. So you can use, for example, a yellow chalk, and then a pink chalk, for the actual stitch marks. Just use two different colors, it's up to you. But first I make these kind of like simple grids, depending on the complexity of the pattern. This one's pretty intense, but very cute. Okay, first I'm just going to draw the pattern just to give you an idea of what it would look like. And then now I'm going to show you how I would stitch it. So I would just do straight lines first, in the most economic way in terms of thread usage.
there are quite a lot of sashiko patterns you can find online if you just google it's kind of endless you can go crazy from simple to complicated and not all of them are super geometric as well so that's quite nice check it out I'll show you one more pattern, it's one of my favourites. I quite like this kind of zigzag herringbone style. I hope you do too. Okay, now you know I'm not a perfect princess when it comes to just about everything, but for this I am trying to keep to a three stitches per line, if that makes sense, to create some kind of balance. This is kind of something you will find in Sashiko stitches. There is a kind of evenness, equal distribution kind of thing between lines, so I personally just think it looks nicer, so I am going to try to be a little bit careful this time to do that, but up to you. You can just follow the lines as you like, willy nilly too. Okay, so here is a more complicated example. I did a cat instead of a circle this time, and you can see it matches the drawing, and it looks really nice, I think. I didn't do it perfectly, but I'm really happy with the result. It's so cute! Look at this little kitty! Now you can kind of see my plan is to have these circles all over the hoodie. Yes. 